This is the cosine function. Its graph is the cosine wave. And this is a series, a Maclaurin series. Do you know that this series allows one to create a polynomial function that matches the values of cosine x? And in many practical application, is a good numerical approximation of the function it represents? Let me show you how and why. This is about the Maclaurin series of the cosine function. We already showed the derivation of the Taylor series of a function f at a, and we said that the Taylor series is given by f of x equals the summation from n equals 0 up to infinity of f to the n prime of a over n factorial times the quantity x minus a raised to n, where this small n represents the order of the derivative. Now, a special case of this Taylor series happens when this value a is equal to 0. If we let this a be equal to 0, then the resulting series would now be what we call as the Maclaurin series, which is now given by the summation from n equals 0 up to infinity of f to the n prime of 0 over n factorial times the variable x raised to n. And we can now expand this this way. So as we iterate from n equals 0 up to infinity, then our order of differentiation is from the original function to f prime to f double prime to f triple prime and so on. And this dot 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 says we need to continue this pattern theoretically up to infinity. But since we cannot do that up to infinity, then this series in practice is just an approximation of the real function. The more terms we included, then the more that we are approximating the original function. So for today, what we are going to do is we are going to derive the Maclaurin series of the cosine function. But before that, let's visualize first the comparison between the graph of y equals cosine x and the graph of several terms of this Maclaurin series representation of the cosine function. So let's go to the Desmos graphing calculator. So what I have here is the graph of y equals cosine x. Last time we graphed the sine function and this green graph is the sine function. Notice that the graph of the cosine function has the same shape as the graph of the sine function, only that the red curve here is shifted pi over 2 region, or 90 degrees to the left. Since we already derived the Maclaurin series expansion of the sine function, we're going to focus here with the cosine function. Now, I have here some list of the terms of the Maclaurin series of cosine of x. And let me superimpose the first two terms with the red curve. So if I have 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial, the graph is this blue parabola. If I added three terms of the series, I now have this graph. If I added again another term to have four terms now, we just keep expanding going to the left and going to the right. And notice that the interval where the red and the blue graph coincide are also expanding. And let me add some more terms. So you notice that the interval where they coincide keeps on expanding. Let me add some more terms. And you notice that it's expanding again. Now let me add 20 terms of the series. Notice that in here, you might think that you only have one graph. But in reality, there are two graphs there. You have the red graph, which is the cosine of x, and this Maclaurin series expansion of cosine x, which is superimposed over the red graph. And if I'm going to zoom out, you will notice that Actually, we have two graphs. One is the red, the other is the blue. Only that from the interval negative 15 up to positive 15, these two graphs coincide. Now, if I keep adding terms in this series, then the interval for which these two graphs coincide would keep on increasing. And if we can add infinite numbers of terms in this series, then this blue and the red graph would become just one graph. That's the beauty of this Maclaurin series expansion of the function. We can approximate the function by writing series. And the beauty of this is that this Maclaurin series expansion lends itself better to numerical computation. Calculators and computers are programmed to compute the value of some trigonometric functions by programming the Maclaurin series up to a certain degree of accuracy. And the reason also why we are doing this lesson is because once we have this Maclaurin series for the sine function, for the cosine function, and for the natural exponential function, then we'll be able to derive the Euler identity and the Euler formula, which are very, very important in our study of complex analysis. 
So let's get back to the derivation part. So from here, we need the value of f of zero, f prime of zero, f double prime of zero, and so on. So what is our f of x? Our f of x is cosine of x, because this is the function that we would like to derive the Maclaurin series expansion. We need f of zero. So what is f of zero? f of zero is cosine of zero. And in order to know what's the cosine of zero, we can go back to the unit circle. And the angle zero is at this location. And at this point, the x coordinate is one, the y coordinate is zero, because this is a unit circle. And the x coordinate is the cosine of the angle, and the y coordinate is the sine of the angle. So if our angle is zero, then the x coordinate is one, so that means cosine of zero is positive one. The first derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we have here negative sine evaluated at zero because the first derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x and we want to get f prime of zero so we need to get negative sine of zero. At negative sine of zero, the sine here is zero, it's neither positive nor negative so in effect this negative sine has no effect so we have zero. Next, we need to get f double prime of zero. We need to get the derivative of negative sine x. So what's the derivative of sine x? It's cosine x, but there's a negative sign here and we are going to evaluate at zero. So cosine of zero again is one and then copy this negative sign, you have negative one. We then continue to f triple prime of zero. So we need to get the derivative again of cosine of x, which is negative sine x, but since you have a negative sign here, we have negative times negative equals positive sign, evaluated at x equals zero. So this part here is again equal to zero. Then the fourth derivative of zero would be the derivative again here. And what's the derivative of sine of x? It's cosine of x, and then evaluate at zero. And again, this is equal to one. Notice that the cycle repeats every four terms. You have one, zero, negative one, zero, and then you have one, zero, negative one, zero again. So using now the Maclaurin series expansion formula, and using now these values for f of x, f prime of x, f double prime of x, and so on, we now have this result. We copy f of zero. f of zero is one. So we have one over zero factorial x to the zero plus f prime of zero. f prime of zero is zero over one factorial x to the first f double prime of zero, which is negative one, over two factorial x to the second plus f triple prime of zero, which is also zero, over three factorial x to the third plus f fourth prime of zero, which is one, over four factorial x to the fourth and so on. Let's put that, that, that here. So zero factorial is by definition equal to one. So this is one over one and any number raised to zero is one. So this part here is one. So you have zero here. So zero over one factorial is zero. This entire part would just be zero. And then you have here negative one over two factorial x to the second. And then this part again is zero. And then you have plus one over four factorial x to the fourth and so on. Then let's remove all these terms that are zero. We do not need them. So we now have one minus, we can now write this as one fraction, x squared over two factorial. This is zero again. So you have plus x to the fourth over four factorial. And you notice that if we keep expanding this, the pattern is very apparent that you have here x squared, x to the fourth. The next one should be x to the sixth. The next one is x to the eighth. And for the denominator, whatever is the exponent, you just append the factorial sign. So you'll have here six factorial. You have here eight factorial. And for the sign, it's alternating. You have minus, plus. You have minus here. You have plus. You have minus, and then continue the pattern. Then we want to write this in compact form. Write this in terms of sigma notation. So in sigma notation, we can now write this as the summation from k equals zero 
up to infinity, you have the variable x, and then these are even numbers. Even numbers are written in the form 2 times k. So we can write this as raised to 2k. And since the exponent and the denominator are the same number, we put here also 2k and then append the factorial sign. But we need to account for this alternating sign. So we need to put here negative 1 raised to some exponent so that we can account for the alternating sign and the exponent would be k. Now let's check if this formula works. Let's take any term. Let's say this term that contains x to the 6 over 6 factorial. So this is index 0, index 1, index 2, and index number 3. So at index number 3, let's check if we are going to get this value. So using now this formula, negative 1 raised to the index 3, x raised to 2 times 3, which is 6, over 2 times 3 is also 6, and then copy the factorial. Negative 1 raised to the third power is equal to negative 1 because it's an odd number, so it's negative. And then we just copy x to the 6th over 6 factorial, which agree with the result in index number 3. In other words, this part will give you the right term depending on whatever is the index. And this formula, summation from k equals 0 to infinity, means we are going to get the sum of all these terms. And the sum of the terms is the one that represents the graph that we superimpose with the graph of the cosine function that we showed in the first part of this video. So therefore, the Maclaurin series expansion of cosine x is now the summation from k equals 0 up to infinity of negative 1 raised to k times x raised to 2k all over 2k factorial. So this is now our answer to that math problem of the day.